It's time to cook with Susan Beck. I'm really excited about my new Christmas present. For Christmas, I got this gourmet pasta press. Now, I have owned for years the rollers that come with the KitchenAid mixer as accessories. This one here rolls it out, and then I have a cutting blade to make fettuccine and one to make spaghetti. Now, this machine allows you to make two pastas. So we're going to see what's in the box here today. So in my box, like I said, I have yet to use this, so it'll be an experiment today. I have a twisting gadget that'll push my dough through the machine. There's an opening on top. And there is a cutter here that as the pasta comes out, you can cut it at the lengths you want. As I was reading through the booklet, it said nine and a half inches was a good length for spaghetti, where your tube pasta is usually you know, just a couple inches or even less than an inch long. This little gadget I had to read in the book too. I wasn't quite sure what to do with it, but it is a press that goes into this top part if the pasta doesn't want to come out. And there's a little hook that you can also use for cleaning it later down here. Now on the end is the spiral that holds the different whoa, blades in, except there's not a blade in there right now, so it won't hold in place. So let's have a look at these blades. Let's see what else is in this box. So we have six different cutting blades. We have rigatoni, which is a tube-shaped pasta, spaghetti, both large and small macaronis, and then we have two other ones that are a little different. We have baccatini, which I had to look up online because I wasn't familiar with that one, but baccatini is long like spaghetti, but it has a hollow tube through the middle, so it cooks both inside and out. And then we have fusali, which is a twisted pasta, and you can kind of see there that it looks like it will take that dough and twist it. The last item in the box is this little tool for cleaning purposes because there's lots of little spaces that might need some dough poking, poked out in order to clean it up at the end. So I'm excited to give this a try. Let's just take these different blades out of the box and set this to the side along with the other pasta attachments that we're not going to use today. Now I'm guessing from working with pasta before that I'm probably going to want a little flour on my tray here as I collect the pasta that drops out of the machine. Your KitchenAid comes with a little opening up here and into that opening fits this piece. Okay, let's unscrew that a little more maybe. All right, that fit in nice and snugly. My tray looks well centered. We'll get the flour out of the way. Now earlier I made up some pasta dough that I am going to be putting into little golf-sized balls to drop in there as recommended by our handy instruction book. So let's just gonna pop right into there as we try out the different pastas. You know what I forgot to do? I did not put on a blade. I think we could still manage that. All right, let's try the rigatoni. So that has some notches that look like they fit pretty good. Attach this ring. That'll hold that twisting auger in place. Then we've got the cutting blade as we want to break this up. So I have no idea how this is going to go, but we'll give it a try. So I'm going to turn this on to like a two setting. Nothing's coming out, so we'll try the little gadget for pushing it through. And still no pasta. Let's put in another ball. Turn it up a little, maybe that's the key. About all that's happening right now is enough vibration to make my tray slide a little bit. Alright, I'm going to pause that and do a little reading here on what to do. trying to troubleshoot what's going wrong. I see I do have some pasta and they are tube shaped with some ridges on the edge and they are starting to come out 
of the bottom. So maybe I'm just not patient enough. So let's try that again. I did read for rigatoni, it said in here, a, side, a speed of six is recommended. So I'm going to increase my speed a little bit from where it was. All right, I think it's time to try cutting some of those. This is really quite awesome. I'm very, very impressed with this. All right, in goes another ball. Give it a little crust to get it down in there, although I'm not sure I need to do that as much as I have been doing it. Snip, off goes the next one. I now have six of these little tubes. You have to be careful not to pinch them together. Move them out of the way there. A few more golf ball or walnut ball pieces of pasta. Okay, so those I made a little bit longer. Like I said, I'm just doing some experimenting today. All right, I'm gonna try changing that blade. Let's see if I can do it while it's on the machine. Okay, that twists off fairly easily. Part of my experiment today is to see what all of these look like, so. Next into my press, I can see where that tool is going to come in handy for cleaning up some of the dough. Oh, what should we try? How about that? Um, that one I wasn't familiar. Bucatelli. Not very good with my Italian. All right, on that one goes. I guess you can switch these out without removing everything. All right, in goes another piece of pasta dough. stick together as they already are. I have to say I think this is really rather fun. Now if you've never made pasta dough before it's simply using eggs, flour, and water. A little bit of salt is good for flavor. So today's recipe um, I used the one that was in this book a cup of water or sorry a cup total of water and eggs. So this recipe had me break three eggs into a measuring cup and add enough water to equal one cup. And then I um, used three cups of flour and a tablespoon, sorry, a teaspoon of salt. So that's all you ever use in pasta dough. It's very simple, very basic, does not cost very much to make pasta. You can change out the kind of um, flour you want to use. Okay, just making sure everything is still tight. This time I believe I put on the large, yep, the large macaroni. The small one is still laying there. Check my book here. Um, for large macaroni it says a six again.
I'm learning to be a little more patient with it before it starts to come out down there. All right, I can see a little coming through though. Now in my opinion, macaroni is shorter than rigatoni, so I cut those off at about an inch, where these I had, I don't know, an inch and a half and two inches long. Oh, let's slide our pan over. I could see my husband using these in his chili because I guess that's the Wisconsin way is to put macaroni in your chili. That might be all of those I make because I want to be sure I have enough to try out some of our other attachments. This cutting blade is rather handy. It seems to be doing a nice job. It reminds me of a cheese cutter. All right, we'll trade that out one more time and then I will do a little close-up so you can see better what's going on. Check out all this fun pasta we've made so far. Rigatoni. Let's see if we can get a better look at there's a little tube going through that um, baccacini, and then my large elbow noodles here. All right, I have put the fazali attachment in along with a little bit of pasta dough. You can see it down in there. It was recommended to put this pasta style on about a three. So here it comes out. Steam. Definitely a different look than some of the other ones. Let's use the cutter. All right, I'm having a little trouble with my cutter here. What did I do? There we go. I might have missed that on the video, but we'll try it again the next time. Here we come again. Pretty amazing. I've always wondered how you could make um, more of your macaroni kind of pastas rather than just the rolling ones, which is a more popular tool that you can buy. All right, those popped right off and are laying down here on top of my macaronis now. These are laying right down here on top of my macaronis. The tool also works to remove this, and I noticed that this is getting a little snugger as I have... Um, put more pasta in there and it's probably getting a little sticky down in there. So this just has some little grooves it slides on and you can loosen that right up. So that's definitely a handy feature too. It's like KitchenAid thought of everything with this. All right, so let's pop out that one. I'm not gonna make any um, small macaroni. They're not gonna look too much different than the big ones, I don't think, but we will just do a little bit of spaghetti here before we wrap up today's video. All right, spaghetti, back on a 10. It looks like the long noodles, they like the faster speeds. So, a little bit loud here as we make a little spaghetti. All right, definitely thinner than the baccatelli. together like my hollow ones did. Really works pretty quickly. You could easily whip a batch of this up even on a weeknight for a meal. round of spaghetti. Might have to make um, some cavatini. It's got pepperoni and hamburger in it. My mother used to make that and it always called for three different kinds of pasta. Well, 
we've got five kinds here, so we're well set for that recipe. Or another use I was thinking about was making um, pepper jack mac and cheese, which is one of my kids and my favorite recipes. Okay, so I put the rest of the pasta dough through. So this is how much pasta I got out of one batch, three cups of flour, three eggs, a teaspoon of salt, and enough water to make those three eggs equal one cup of liquid. So I don't know, but I am really excited to have fresh pasta tonight. This was an awesome 